you have notifications turned on? No. So for the last six months, I've been working on a notification. And notifications are actually pretty interesting. Traditionally, when you're working... Oh my god! So traditionally, when you're working in the back end, the middleware, or the front end, the front end will have some kind of button or some kind of screen they want to load, and they'll make requests to the middleware. And then the middleware will be like, okay, let's go get some data to process, and they'll trigger a bunch of back end services and request them for information. The back end will have all their data back here, and then send, based on this request, all the data back. The middleware will do some processing, and then they'll send it back to the front end. And it's this request response design or model. And this is good for most of the things you'll build in software development. But notifications are a little different. They're event driven. And so the back end decides it's time to send a notification. They send it to the middleware, the middleware gets it, processes it, and then eventually it's sent to the front end and the front end just displays it. It's a different model because the front end is no longer generating the request. It's the back end that decides it's time to show some information. Now this decision of it's time to send a notification, it could be something the user does outside of the app or it could just be a certain time or day is hit or it could just be product decides we want to notify all users because there's a new feature that got released or whatever, but it's the back end that decides it's time to send this notification. And the front end is not generating any requests to request the information. But how does all this work? Well, the back end is generating these notifications and we'll put them somewhere. All these notifications, they'll generate them to be sent out to users, and then the middleware, which is where I work, is gonna listen for these notifications and process them. By processing it, it might add some data to it, it might modify the data format, so it's easier for the front end to render and to show to the user. Now because this is a one-way process, it starts in the back end, goes to the front end, without the front end generating a request, it has its own sets of challenges, one of which being testing. It's pretty difficult to test this thing manually. You can't just hit an endpoint and verify the response, or go into your app and press a bunch of buttons and see that the app behaves appropriately. This notification has to be generated in the back end. Why is it so cold? So you have to generate a fake notification and then hope it goes through all of the flows and makes it to the final end user. If for some reason it didn't make it, you'd have to check the logs and see what happened. You wouldn't get this error response code. This makes it less straightforward than your typical client server relationship where the front end is sending you a request and then maybe it's going through a bunch of layers, maybe you have a couple middlewares here or you have a couple back ends back here. There are many requests made and then eventually makes it to the front end. So how do you test this? Well, it depends on how your application is built. If the system that's processing these notifications is built with Node.js or Java Spring Boot or some framework that allows you to easily add endpoints, you could just add a test endpoint. So you'd have like a little, little thing here, test endpoint. You'd have this test endpoint that the front end could use to generate these notifications. This test endpoint would be linked to the logic used to process the notification. So typically the back end is putting all these notifications here to be processed, they're picked up by the middleware, and they go into this logic thing that decides what we want to push to the user. So the test endpoint would send back maybe a 200 to confirm that the notification has been sent, and then it would be hooked up to this logic and the user would receive a push notification. 
It would be a test endpoint that allows the client to generate fake notifications to test with. Now, the problem with this is now your test endpoint is taking up the resources in your main system, the system that's used to process the notifications. You could pull this out and make it its own system. All right, this is a prettier drawing. <laughs> so we have the front end. The front end would call the test endpoint, and, and maybe it's not even in the app, but we're just saying this is the front end team. The front end team is going to call the test endpoint. This will generate a notification, send it to our middleware, or it could even send it to this place where the back end, um, this place, where the back end puts their notifications. And that's probably even better, so we'll do that. They're picked up by the middleware, the middleware processes it, and then sends the notification to the actual app. The front end might get a 200 back just to say, or 202 saying like, hey, we saw it, we're gonna go and process it, great. Like it got sent successfully to this back end, this place where it's picked up by the middleware. Now both of these options require us to do work. We'd have to add the test endpoint to our main service, or we would have to build a completely separate infrastructure to support the separate test endpoint so that it doesn't take up the resources of our main application. So what do we do? Well, sometimes I ask myself, what is the easiest and least maintainable solution? Well, as engineers on the middleware, we have access to where the back end puts these notifications. We created this piece so that they could put their notifications somewhere. So when I'm testing the service, I just put a notification on this structure and it gets pulled into my service and then sent out to the front end. And I can only do that because I have access to push things to this place. I have access to push a notification onto this structure. And front end does not have this access. So front end is always pinging me to put notifications in this place so that they can test notifications end to end or close to end to end. Technically it's not coming all the way from the back end. We're mocking a little bit of that piece, but it's close. And this solution in theory works because we can just push things to this place. It'll get picked up by our system, sent to the front end for the notification but I'm really tired of being pinged by the front end. Well, if we take a step back, this is really an access management problem. We have access to put the notifications onto this place. The front end doesn't. So we could just generate credentials for them to put it so they could put things in this place. Is that a bad idea though? Opening up access to our services just so we can test them. It could be if we constantly have to add people and generate credentials for people to put notifications in this place. It could also be bad if we don't want the front end to have to deal with the details of the back end. They would need to know exactly the format of what things need to look like in this place between the middleware and the back end. They're worried about the front end. They shouldn't have to deal with these details. However, that problem could be solved if I just create some scripts and a readme that does most of the formatting for it and they just have to run the scripts. Well, I guess what they'd have to do is log in with their credentials or be able to know where their credentials are, know what account they want to test with and make sure it can be used for this type of push notification and then run the script. Then the test notification would be generated. So when I brought this up with the front end team, they immediately wanted access to our console. This would happen in the cloud and so they wanted access to the cloud console, but I'm not gonna give that to them. No matter how much they like the UI, it would require me to give them a lot more access than what they need. I can't just give them access to send this piece of data to that, that back end middleware piece. I would have to give them access to like, more things and I don't want to do that so they're going to be forced to use the terminal and run the script to generate that notification and put it into the right place. So I'm going to create the scripts, create the readme 
and I'll let you know how it goes. All right, so the scripts are created, and initially I started coding them in Python, but then I realized most of what I was doing, doing was writing a terminal command and then using the Python OS library to run the terminal command. So I figured I probably shouldn't code this in Python, I should use bash or shell scripting. I never know what that language is called. It's just like you run a file in the terminal. But I switched it to using a bash script so I could just have a set of commands that need to be run, but I could also create some variables in that. So all they'll have to do is run the script and it will generate the notification. Did you think about coding it in JSON? What? Did you think about coding it in JSON? No. So JSON is not a programming language. I don't know who is saying this. It is a format, is it is a notation, it is JavaScript object notation. It's not even a markup language like HTML. It's worse than HTML. It's like a, it's it's less than that. Maybe there's something I'm missing, but um So I created two scripts. One that creates the notification template with a given account, and then another that lets you send that notification. This way, you don't have to track down an account every time you wanna send a notification. You can just use the template and send it to the appropriate environment. This will also make it easier for the backend to test because we'll be able to use these scripts too and send those test notifications. Before, we were manually creating this template and sending it to that little place where they're picked up. Um, we were doing all that manually, but with the scripts, it's a lot easier, even for the back end. So next steps. The next step is to meet with the front end team and show them this tool. I told them I was gonna build this tool um, and hopefully they'll use it now and stop bugging me. And I'm not gonna just meet with the whole team outright. I'm gonna meet with one engineer and kind of test it out, see how they think, get feedback. I wanna make sure one engineer can use it before I ask every engineer to use it. And that's it. Thank you for watching and happy coding.